Well, we're in event 13. We've reached part six of event 13. We said we'd break it down into seven pieces. And this is in Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 53, AD 29, found only in Luke. And uh, you're gonna have a fun time with this passage. Uh, chapter 12, at verse 49. And uh, I think most of us can relate to this. Uh, fire can be used in many different ways in the Bible. It can be used many different ways in our own lives and in the natural events of the world. Fire, when controlled, uh, can be a wonderful thing nothing much nicer than sitting in front of a fireplace on a cold winter's night and enjoying the warmth that comes from the hearth of the fireplace. Nothing more distracting, devastating, and heartbreaking than to come home and find your house has burned to the ground by fire. And nothing much more pleasant than turning on the shower and finding that your gas hot water heater has provided you a wonderful warm shower. Nothing more frightening or damaging than a bolt of lightning causing fire. The same thing is true in the Bible. In the Bible we find fire represented many different ways positively and negatively. Certainly we all relate to the negativeness of the fiery of hell, the unquenchable flames, the torment that is there. And certainly again, in catastrophic human terms, uh, the fire that the Romans were responsible for, for destroying the temple in AD 70, and the destruction that was caused there in Jerusalem. And yet there's nothing more pleasant than the thought of the fire of Pentecostal fire. Pentecostal fire where it seemed like uh, tongues of fire touched every person that was there in Pentecost and they began to speak with tongues and as they began to prophesy and to preach because of the fire of God and a Pentecostal fire. So we see that there is a Pentecostal fire and they receive the Holy Spirit. There's punitive fire, both physical from the burning of the temple in Jerusalem to the fire that will come out of heaven in the book of Revelation chapter eight, verse seven, where we see a third of the earth burned up by a punitive fire judgment of the earth and Jesus talked about those kinds of fires he talked about uh, well actually John the Baptist mentioned that Jesus was coming and he would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire and uh, he also in the ne very next verse he said the unquenchable fire of hell <laughs> so we we can see these types of fires. So we come to verse, uh, that was a long rabbit run, wasn't it? We come to verse 49 and he said, Jesus says, I come to cast fire. Now, which kind of fire was it? Was it a punitive fire or was it Pentecostal fire? Well, the answer may be found in the second part of the verse where it says, I wish I had already kindled it. Well, I don't think that Jesus was that much of in a hurry to devastate the earth. I don't think he was in that much of a hurry 
to punish the Jews through the Romans by them rejecting Jesus. I believe that he was talking about Pentecostal fire here. I believe that he wished he had already started and kindled that fire of the Holy Spirit working in and through the people of God. Well, we certainly saw the punitive fires, but if we go on to verse 50, uh, then we see even more substantiation. And he said, but first I have to go through a baptism. And his baptism would be a baptism of fire, if you will, uh, because his baptism uh, would bring about uh, his death on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it's going to be difficult for me. It's going to be a, dis uh, a, uh, a distasteful and it's going to be a distressed time for me until I finish that baptism that I have to go through. In John 19.30, he says, it is finished. So we certainly would go back and believe that this fire that Jesus came that he wished he had started or kindled sooner was the Pentecostal fire, the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on and he says a second very interesting thing in this very short section of scripture. He says, do you suppose I've come to bring peace? No, I've come to bring division, even amongst families. Now, does that sound logical? Why would he bring a division between the families. Well, certainly there were Jews that believed that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, and there were those that didn't. Fathers would be turned against sons, and sons against fathers, mothers against daughters, and daughters against mothers. And even today we see this uh, Christianity that's been brought into this world causing division amongst families. I remember when Lois and I were out witnessing early in our lives as Christians and Lois happened to witness to a Jewish young young lady, uh, probably in her early 20s. And it brought division in this young lady's family uh, because uh, the young lady's family was Jewish. And for her daughter, his daughter, to turn to Christianity, they actually had a funeral for her and broke off all relationship with her because she had turned to Christianity from Judaism. Uh, but it's even within families that are not Jewish versus being Christians. Uh, I can remember uh, my dad saying that I should wait to go into the ministry because I was in the highest earning area of my life and to give my life to Christ as a minister was foolish. Uh, that I could earn so much more doing what I was doing as a corporate executive than I could ever make as a minister of the gospel. And so we see that it divided our family. And, and even when I shared and witnessed to my father before he was saved, uh, he used to say, well, that's fine for you, but I just don't believe there's anything hereafter when we die. I'm so thankful that he changed his mind before he died. But there is something hereafter. We do have an eternal soul. And we get to decide where that soul is going to spend an eternity. And so we find not only this fire, the Pentecostal fire, but we also find that it brings about a division. It brings about a division between those that believe and those that don't believe. Uh, I have school chums who have never accepted Christ. And all I can do is continue to pray for them, that they would come to the truth and the truth would set them free. Because it is a choice of our own, a choice that we make based on every bit of the evidence. And my friends, please don't overlook the evidence, the proof that there is a living God and that he did love us enough that he provided a way for our forgiveness of sins and that way is through Jesus Christ. And we come to celebrate and to also come with some sorrow as we think about what Jesus had to pay on the cross of Calvary for our salvation. Think about that. Think about the fire, the Pentecostal fire, 
which gives us the Holy Spirit, which indwells us and gives us a peace, even in the midst of most trying times, including the trying time of death. And think about the fact that it will cause division. There'll be some that say that you're foolish. And there'll be some that will rejoice with you that death is swallowed up in victory. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. We can know for certain about salvation through the Roman road. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.6 For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 10.9, that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God bless you and have a great day.